Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hey guys, and welcome back to Theory of Pets. My name is Samantha. This week, I wanted to talk with you guys about a piece of technology in the pet industry that is really kind of piquing my interest, and it's cameras for pets. Um, I work from home. Thankfully, I don't have to leave my dogs for long periods of time, but when I am gone, I wonder what they're up to, and I found myself wondering this more. We have a boxer who is seven years old. Um, she has some separation anxiety. It's pretty mild, but um, I, I always wonder about what she does when we leave. Uh, recently, I've noticed that she's sitting in. We have a big picture window in the front of our house, and whenever I pull in the driveway, she is there sitting in the window and I always wonder does she sit there all day and wait for me while I'm gone or does she just um, you know hear recognize the sound of my car we live on a in a very rural area on a back road so um, does she just recognize the sound of my car and when she hears it kind of starting to turn down our road um, we're the first house on the road so does she recognize that and jump into the window I don't know. So I've been thinking about pet cameras and I wanted to take a little bit today and talk to you guys about um, pet cameras and technology in the pet industry and um, to help me kind of learn a little bit more about pet cameras and what to look for when you're shopping for one and um, kind of the trends in the pet industry and where those might be going. I spoke today with the senior marketing manager at PetCube. PetCube has released a pet camera and um, Rachel and I discussed, um, like I said, technology in the pet industry very briefly, um, but certainly pet cameras and if you're thinking about buying one or um, you know you don't really know much about them she gave me a lot of really great information and some tips and tricks for pet owners like myself that aren't exactly technologically savvy um, I, I don't really get into a lot of technology I try um, certainly my children are better at technology than I am um, which is kind of silly because I, I work in a business where you know I'm always testing products and testing technology but um, you know it's just not easy for me to pick it up and learn it the way that it is uh, for some people. So if you're like me, you're not specifically technologically savvy and you're kind of you want to know what's going on with your animals, your dog or your cat throughout the day, but you're not sure that a pet camera is right for you, um, listen to Rachel. She's got some great pointers, um, and certainly I learned a lot by talking to her. So I'm excited to share her information with you guys as well. There's internet of everything. There's for your home, for your yard, for your car. And I think Internet of Things is just really finally hitting pets. Um, and, and there's a lot of people that I think laugh at that a little bit, like Internet of Pets, how silly. But when you really break it down and you look at it, our pets can't speak for themselves. They don't have a voice. And many times, because they don't have a voice, health problems will take a lot longer to discover. Behavior problems take a lot longer to work out. You know, suddenly we realize, wow, my pet just gained three pounds. Oh, no. Or my pet hasn't been going to the bathroom properly for several days. I didn't know until now, and it's, it's too late. Um, so, you know, I, I, I definitely think we get, like, snickers at time of, like, oh, you know, a pet cam. But, but I cannot tell you how many people have come to us telling that it, it helped them solve problems, it helped them with behavior. So trends that I see, you know, connected pet is happening in a couple different areas. Probably the one that most people know about is trackers, GPS collar trackers, which sure. is really, really great. Those are just getting even smarter and cooler. I, I believe uh, a part, I think it was Whistle just released part of theirs that integrates with Google Maps. So you can almost see like a map view of where your pet oh, went. Cool. It's really, really cool. Um, they're getting to do a lot of different stuff. They're starting to incorporate things like, like almost like Fitbit and things like that where you can measure your pet's steps. Right. Um, so yeah, I think with pet technology, the next area that it's really getting is, is being a little less like here are the steps or here's where your dog is or here's the amount of activity there was and starting to help you synthesize that into a little bit more of what do I do about it. I know that's what Pet Cube we're, we're actively working on is how can we make the amount that your pet moves, the amount that your pet barks, how can we turn that into something that you can do something about? Use. Um, so yeah, that's where I would really say, you know, the Internet of Things is just really finally reaching pets and it's maturing, you know, it's getting to where it's not just 
Bluetooth your dog, but like right. how can we make something actionable and really useful for people out of this? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I think we're seeing more of that trend kind of heading towards the health side of it. And I mean, you said it perfectly. Your dogs can't tell you or your cats can't tell you when they're not feeling well or when something's up. So um, super important for, for pet parents. Um, and I think now, too, we're seeing a lot more folks working outside the home. So yeah. it's kind of going hand in hand that we're not around as often. And, you know, our pets, we need to know what's going on with them. Well, and again, with people, I think kind of, snickering at it and stuff sometimes you know I, I read a great article the other day from a fellow company of ours in the uh, pet tech space called clever pet it's a, a toy for for dogs to play with that's electronic and they were talking about how you know in the evolution of domestic pets it's really only a very small amount of time that these animals have been primarily living in houses with people sure. working all day and how what we interpret as, you know, oh, he's so lazy, he sleeps all day and stuff, is frequently your dog being very bored, depressed, um, not acting out on their natural behaviors. Sure. So when you see those things, it's, it's really not to be laughed at. It's kind of your pet silently crying out. So, um, yeah, people can laugh, but I think pet owners really very seriously understand the, the problem that we're addressing. Definitely. And I mean, that's a perfect segue to kind of talk about Pet Cube and, and what it offers. Um, and there's other cameras on the market too. And, and yep. maybe if you could tell us a little bit about what would set Pet Cube apart from some of those other things that we're seeing. Totally. So Pet Cube is an interactive pet cam. It lets you watch, talk to, and play with your pet from your smartphone. So <laughs> <laughs> I knew they'd make an appearance eventually. <laughs> translate what that means is uh when i said watch it's got a 1080p camera hello puppies <laughs> it's got a 1080p camera it has uh, uh night vision so that you can actually see your pet at dark and dark also when i said talk to your pet it's got two-way audio so you can talk to your pet and they can bark or purr back to you and then uh, i said play with your pet which how do you play with your pet through a camera we actually have a laser pointer you move your finger around the app screen and it moves the laser pointer around the room and just to bust a myth that dogs don't play with laser pointer, it's not true. Got lots of dogs, it's very breed dependent. Um, you know, while yeah. a, a pug or a terrier might really love it, I've seen huskies that love it, pit bulls that love it. A lot of herding dogs don't even notice the laser pointer, they just don't care at all. Oh, that's um, interesting. But yeah, so it lets you watch, talk to, and play with your pet. Some of the neat stuff we have are, are things like bark alerts that let you know when your dog is barking, motion alerts so you know when your pet's moving around. Um, yeah, but really, I think the interesting part is the laser pointer that we have. And we have a new product coming out in the spring called PetQ Bites that swaps out the laser pointer for uh, the ability to toss treats to your pet and accompany it with a special command and things like that. So uh, that's sort of the basis of what PetQ does. There are other, first of all, I'd say security cameras on the market. And actually, when we backed into the business that we do is we found out that the way a lot of people are using their home security cameras, it's two ways. It's to watch babies, and it's to uh. watch their pets. <laughs> so when the majority use case was pets, why not make a camera that's specially made for pets rather than made for burglars, which is hopefully actually your edge case. <laughs> you know, hopefully you're not getting burgled all the time. Right. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so there are a few other pet cams that are out there on the market, just a handful, really. It's, you know, like I said, it's an emerging space. Where I think we differ differentiate from a lot of those and this is a really fun part about PetCube. Anyone can play with pets. You can download the app right now, anybody, and start playing with pets. So what you can do with PetCube is actually make your pet live and let other people play with your pet. It oh, sounds, cool. like a, sounds like a crazy thing, and by all means, not all of our users do it. But um, like I mentioned recently, I was at Consumer Electronics Show. It was awesome for me to let other people play with my pets. I was busy all day long. I didn't have time to even play with them. And with our recording service, I actually, at the end of the day, would get a little highlight reel of my pets and see who they played with. Um, like I said, not all our users open their camera public, but what's really cool is you can share just easily with your friends and family, and you can schedule time with them. So if I want to let you play with my cat from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, I can do that. It's really fun. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, so I think this... The community, the network of pet owners, we've been investing a lot of time in getting pet cubes out in shelters. It helps pets get adopted. It helps shelter pets get play. So I'd really say the kind of community that we're fostering is one of our big competitive advantages. The other thing is the cloud recording service that lets you save those clips in the cloud. 
I mean, let's be honest, like, most of our pets are pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, they do sleep a lot of times. And so with our cloud recording service, it's based on, based on sound and motion. It lets you, you know, for my cats, it lets me get this five times a day that they do move <laughs> or the you five times it. a day they fight with each other. Or, um, yeah, so I, I would say the cloud recording service is a really big boon that we have to really capture those times that your pet is at their best. Yeah, I, I mean, certainly I think the, you know, allowing um, other people to play with your pet too, and, and I can see how some people maybe wouldn't want to do that, but, um, you know, not everybody's fortunate enough to be able to use a cell phone or a tablet or something during work, so um, if you're gone from 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 and you still want your pet to have some mm-hmm. interaction, you know, that's great. Family or friends or somebody could uh, could help you out kind of and, and yeah. exercise your pet as well. That's really neat. Um, I actually, I have, yeah. Um, I have a pet cube coming. They're set, it, they sent it last week when I set up the okay. interview with you. So um, I'll be reviewing it for our site and, and to show our readers too. So yeah, I'm excited to check it out. Um, well, like I just told you, we have three dogs and four cats. So somebody will always be around to use it. So, have you ever tried laser with them? The, our cats love the laser. All four of them are. Um, we have a little beagle mix who doesn't really seem to care about a laser pointer. And our boxer... She's older and doesn't really care about anything, but our, our lab does like a laser. The yeah. cats, the cats, all all of our cats, older and younger, go crazy for a laser pointer. Good. It's really fun in the dark. It looks like a game of like. Oh cats. yeah, so cool. It's really fun. Yeah, and just I mean, you know, being able to keep tabs on them. I work from home, so I'm used to seeing them all the time and knowing what they're doing. So when we leave the house. Our one of our dogs has separation anxiety, and I I think I do a little bit too. You know, when we leave the house, I'm so used to being with them, so it's nice to be able to check in and and see what's going on throughout the day and just say hi to them. Or, well, and we've had cases of people where um, a really great one we had the other day was somebody who they put the cat's bowl up above the dog's bowl on the floor, cat's bowl is up on the shelf, and the dog knocked over the cat's bowl and was starting to eat the food with the glass in it. Oh. And the owner heard it from the sound alarm and actually was able to distract the pet with her voice and the laser pointer while she drove home to go clean up the mess. So oh, wow. We, had, we actually we had another case with a broken mirror. Um, yeah, we've had several case studies of actually people being able to help their pets with that. So Yeah, and cool. actually that was my next question and kind of thing that I wanted to chat with you about was, um, you know, the benefits of these types of technological devices for animals and um you know that's one thing i never even thought of but um certainly pets with separation anxiety if it's not super severe you can touch base and they can hear your voice throughout the day um is a help and just keeping them active i think um like you said people are working outside the home dogs tend to be lazy not necessarily because they're a lazy dog but because they're bored they're depressed so um keeping them active and and having them move around a little bit throughout the day is a huge benefit well, and we've seen a lot of people, um, you know, again, when people think this is a silly thing, you know, the use case for elderly pets who, you know, have issues that the use case for, we have tons of fosters who use it for their baby kittens. You know, you don't want oh, to be nice. there with a, with a mom that's just given birth and you want to give her her space to nurse and everything. So it's really easy for them to just place the pet cube in there, keep an eye on them, keep an eye on them. Uh, we have breeders and stuff who use it while, while animals are giving birth. Cool, yeah. Uh, so especially for sick animals, elderly animals, it just makes a lot of sense. And we've had people who their pets are at the end of their life. And to be able to just check on your pet and have that little bit of extra time with your animal, even if it's digital. Um, I mean, our product is as much for animals as it is for people. It, you know, the peace of mind you get to have as a person that you're making that connection is is huge. You know, we have tons of case studies, but, you know, I think... What we almost get the, the least amount of is how great it is for people and how happy it makes them just to be able to have that connection the other day. There's that hugely popular game. Have you heard of Nico at Sumi? Yeah. It's like, so it's just, I mean, clearly people love that engaging with animals, cultivating, and for people who are allergic, can't have pets, it's like a little cat cafe that you can carry in your pocket yeah. all the time. Uh, it's as therapeutic for people as it is for animals. It really is. I, absolutely. I agree. Like I said, I mean, I think sometimes leaving the house, especially, you know, not just running to the grocery store, but when we're gone for a long day, is our dogs are so used to having somebody home all the time. So I do worry about them when, you know, we're gone for long days and they're all by themselves. Are they just sitting there sad and depressed? Are they playing with each other? Are they moving around? So it's cool to be able to check in and, and give yourself that peace of mind, too, that your dog's 
fine when you're well, gone. You see funny little behaviors. Like I can't tell you just all the funny dogs hiding stuff or cats oh. <laughs> getting in little fights or like um, people who have learned that you know okay if me and my husband leave at the same time then the dog goes crazy with separation anxiety but if my husband leaves and then I leave 15 minutes later the dog's a lot calmer like weird little things people have learned it's almost like we've had the concept of a game camera for for a long time where people watch wild animals right they are they watch deer these are really just little animals that live in our house so you know the game cam like it's fun to watch their little hidden yeah, yeah, learning, I mean, you could have dogs for years and not know all their little quirks. Yeah, it's Very pretty cool. hilarious. Yeah. So when people are shopping for technology, because like myself, not all, not everyone is technologically advanced, um, what would you advise people, I guess, what should they be looking for? Because like you said, there's not a lot of products yet on the market for as far as cameras, yes. but you know, there is there are options out there. Yeah. Yeah, I would say first, um, night vision is huge. We actually didn't include night version in the first version of our product. It's in our new Pet Cube Play. The fact of the matter is a lot of pets are nocturnal. My cats are hugely nocturnal. It's not even worth it most of the time for me to go in and look at my cats during the day. Nighttime is the time they're active. So I would really say night version, vision, first of all. Um, second of all, and this is one that I don't know a lot about, but I had to learn while I was here, 720p camera versus 1080p camera. It doesn't sound like that many difference in numbers, but um, a, a higher resolution camera actually does help a whole lot. Um, and then I'd say looking for something, you know, I think if you're looking out on the market and you're comparing a normal security cam with one of these specialty pet cams, with a normal security cam, pretty much what you're going to do is be able to check on your pet and watch them there being sad. Yeah. <laughs> it, there's no two-way engagement to it. so. Really, I would look for a pet cam that allows that two-way engagement, um, whether it's treats, whether it's laser pointer. Find something that, that lets you not just sit there and watch your pet and feel, like, sad about it, but lets you actually do something about that engagement. And I'm telling you, it's just a magical moment. The first time you move your finger across that screen, you see the laser pointer and you see your cat, you know, move their little Yeah. It's like that reach out and touch someone moment, um, and it makes you really feel good, like you're doing something Just, for your pet. So, yeah, those are the three things I'd say. Look for look for uh, night vision. Look for a little bit of a higher resolution camera. It's worth it, and then look for um, that ability to interact and not just watch. And one of the things I noticed too about Pet Cube, and like I said, I do have one coming, but I've checked out the website and I've checked out the app. Um, it seems like it's been designed to be very easy to use, yeah. very user friendly, which is something, like I said, um, I'm not a huge tech person. So some of the things that um, I've tried for top dog tips have been, um, you know, I've had to do some research and, and kind of read the manual and play with it a little bit before I could figure it out. So um, I was really impressed with the app and how, how simple it is to use, yeah. even for somebody that's not, you know, as technologically aware, maybe. Well, and we definitely, I mean, you can tell just by looking at the product, like it's got that Apple aesthetic to it. Like we back into things much more, and this is one of our advantages. We back into it like a startup. We back into it, we move fast with technology. We're very tech savvy. We put tech first. It's not a cheesy looking product. It's not a traditionally pet looking product. It's pretty sleek looking. That's um, true. It's much more Amazon Alexa or um, much more like, uh, Sonos or something like that looking than it is like pet looking. Um, but yeah, we back, we're, we're a technology native company. So I think we back into it with a really tech savvy point of view that puts us ahead of a lot of competitors that are coming from a pet space and maybe don't have tech first experience. Um, so yeah, that's just a native quirk of who we are, who our team is. They've gone through a program called Y Combinator, which is really famous out here in Silicon Valley. So um, yeah, we're a tech first company. We're almost not a pet first company. Um, which translates into a really fantastic user experience for our customers. Yeah, and I mean, just talking about the device itself, you know, one of the other things I noticed is it, it's small. Um, there are other cameras for, for even specifically for pets or security cameras that are larger, um, and you can set it anywhere. Some of them have to be mounted to the wall, which is a little bit um, annoying if you're a pet owner and you don't want to you know, put holes in your wall or you don't have a good place to put it on your wall. Um, I like that it can be set anywhere. So um, for us, we have our little beagle is a 
kind of a troublemaker. She likes to get into things. So I, I have a feeling that if I was talking to her or um, she was, you know, enticed enough, she would probably knock it down. So you have kind of the ability to put it up higher if you have a dog like that or, you know, in an area where your pet can't get it if you do have a dog that's going to do that. Um, so those are two of the things that I noticed as well, the size and um, the where you're able to place it. It, it looks good in your home just sitting on your coffee table or yeah. you know somewhere which is really nice um and maybe not necessarily a pet first company but certainly the technology yeah. first you can notice that did you get to choose a color that you wanted i didn't i they're just sending oh, no. one so but i did notice on the website that they're available in different colors which is great for you know yeah. people that um are going to display it like in the living room or something like that and want it to match their decor so that's really yeah. great I mean, our retention rates of how long people retain using their camera is really high. And I think the fact that it blends into their home is something that really helps with that. It's Absolutely. Not like a it's not a little fun technology piece that they get and play with for a couple of weeks and then throw away. Um, you know, I think the fact that it, yeah, it meshes into their home seamlessly. We have rose gold, which for people that have that kind of copper home fits in perfectly. And yeah, it's designed to be something that you'll have a long relationship with and not, you know, forget about yeah it's it's really nice it doesn't look like something that's just kind of a you know fun little toy that's hanging out there it's it's actually designed to mesh in with your home so i i really liked that as well yeah i mean i would i would just encourage people to follow us on instagram follow us on facebook we love sharing clips of of the funny things that we catch on PetCube. oh so yeah if you, if you are not sure about PetCube, follow us on facebook we post tons of clips of hilarious pets hiding things pets fighting pets trying to jump and fall in, you know, like, I mean, all of, like, you catch hilarious stuff, so if you're not yet sold on PetCube, please follow us on Facebook and see some of these clips, and you're going to want to see what you catch of your pet. Awesome. I will make sure to link your Facebook page to, um, in the article right up and underneath the podcast, so people can check that out with just a click if they want to do that. Great. Great. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It was great to talk to you. I love seeing your dog. Oh, thanks. They're a handful, but we love them. <laughs> <laughs> My thanks to Rachel from Pet Cube. She's the senior marketing manager over there, like I mentioned in the beginning. Um, and I just want to thank her for the great information. Um, like I said, you know, I'm kind of have been thinking about monitoring our dogs um, a little bit when we're out of the house, just because I I worry about them. Um, and after speaking with Rachel, you know, I, I realized how important it is. I think for um, especially pet owners who work outside the house who don't have the opportunities that somebody like I have the opportunity to monitor our pets every day to observe them to see what's going on with them so if their behavior changes and something's not the same it's easy for me to pick up um, but if you're not home as often you know definitely being able to keep an eye on your pet and just see um, you know what they're doing and, and how their behavior is going if it's changing um, you know that's certainly a huge benefit so um, I'm definitely interested in pet cube um, and I'm gonna check it out a little bit more and I hope you guys do as well again you know listen to some of those tips if you're in the market for um, a camera certainly some things that I didn't know about the types of the actual camera and um, some of the features that you should be looking for so great information thanks to Rachel for that um, if you guys have any other questions for me or for Rachel I can get those to her and get them answered for you uh, you can jump on our website which is theoryofpets.com you can leave a uh, any comments or questions there you can write them or um, you can also leave an audio file for me that I might use on a future uh, podcast if you're up to that you can also email me anytime my email is samantha at topdogtips.com and I'd really be happy to uh, answer any questions for you guys or if you have any um, suggestions for future podcasts any topics that you'd like to see covered be sure to send those my way as well and as always if you guys wouldn't mind jumping on iTunes if you haven't done it already just give me a quick review the more reviews I get the easier it is for me to uh, get people to come on and speak with me and to uh, promote the podcast so I would really appreciate that thanks a lot for listening guys and I will see you back next time